Imagine exiting your home and a bomb explodes with nails in it. That's what happened to one Philadelphia mobster. Greetings, fellow Earthlings and viewers across the World Wide Web. This is Tune215, and right now we're in the state of Pennsylvania. We're currently in the city of Philadelphia. Today we're going to be taking a drive through the Girard Estates neighborhood here in South Philadelphia. We have clear skies. The Girard Estates neighborhood was also coined a pocket of suburbia that was home to Stephen Girard, Rocky II, and a mob boss. We're going to start off the drive with the Rocky II house here on Lambert Street. We're going to make a left on Lambert. We're coming off of Passyunk Ave. We're traveling southbound. Now, when Rocky won his winnings in the movie, on part one, he used to live in Kensington. On part two, he moved to this block right here in the movie. And the house is on my left-hand side, 2300 block of Lambert. I believe it's right where the gentleman is standing outside talking to someone. This is the block that Rocky moved to. As you can see, it's a quiet residential uniform block, brownstone homes, two-story row homes. Not far from here is where my boss, Philip Testa, used to live. Let's make this right-hand turn. We gotta be careful, there's a fresh hole on the ground, so I'm gonna have to take this turn with caution. It's a pretty deep hole. I felt that, I scraped my whole chassis. So the boundaries of the Girard Estate neighborhood stretch from South 22nd Street on the west to South 17th Street to the east. The southern boundary is clearly defined as South Side of Shunk Street, but its northern boundary is irregular and stretching from the north side of Porter to South 17th Street. Let's continue moving forward. We're on Rittner. We have the School of Music on my left-hand side. Girard Academic Music Program. We're gonna make this left-hand turn on 22nd. We're coming off of 22nd and Rittner. We have the Girard Academic Music Program entrance on our left-hand side. So this neighborhood is named after Stephen Girard, whose South Philadelphia property was developed in the 1920s by the city of Philadelphia. Now he was one of the wealthiest men. The time he passed away, he was literally wealthy. And he, when he left, he left his earnings to the city of Philadelphia, including his land. Now the block on my left-hand side is where Philip Testa used to live so we're gonna go around the block once so that you guys can see where this mob boss lost his life many mobsters lived in south philadelphia and called south philly home we're at 22nd and shunk so we can't go left because left is a one way so we're going to continue moving forward past shunk we're crossing shunk street I'm gonna make a left-hand turn coming up. We have a plaza on my right with a Dollar General, Advanced Auto Parts, T-Mobile, Foot Locker. There's a Chili's that I used to like to go to. This is the Girard Estate Plaza. Now he passed away in 1831 and he left most of his $6 million to the city of Philadelphia. His will that he left behind stated that he wanted to establish a school for poor orphaned white boys. I'm gonna make a turn right here because that street was closed.
All right, we're on 22nd in Oregon. We have an Aldi's on my right hand side and an AutoZone on my left. So what they did was they made 481 rental homes in this area. Let's make this left hand turn on 21st. We're on 21st in Oregon Ave. Most of the semi-detached homes were designed by architects John and James H. Windrum, and they were built from 1906 to 1916. The architectural styles included bungalow, prairie, mission, Jacobian revival, and colonial revival. They marked the difference from the typical South Philly row home. So as you can see, a lot of these homes look slightly different then your average Philadelphia row home. We have Stephen Gerard Park on my left-hand side, established in 1890. And just to think that at one period of time, a wealthy man owned all of this land. Keep that in mind, all of this land, all of these blocks, what's defined as Gerard Estates was his. And it makes me ponder if that's why they named Gerard Avenue, Gerard Avenue. Because if he gave so much of his money to the city, that's you know the least they can do to pay homage. We're passing 21st and Porter. The mobster's house was on my left-hand side. We're going to go around one more time, except we're gonna go right in front of his house. So it makes sense. In 1979, Girard Estates became a location for the Rocky II film crew. The house was 2313 to be specific. I've passed that house on a few occasions, so if you guys wanna check it out, feel, feel free. All right, I'm going to speed this up just a little bit because we already came through here. We're traveling a whopping 22 miles per hour. Let's make this left-hand turn on 22nd Street. Not far from here, you have the Passyunk Junkyards. It's a junkyard auto mall. Basically, to sum it all up, there's like 20 or so junkyards within a three or four block radius. If one junkyard don't have the part you're looking for, you usually can go to the next one. Or even better, you can put a call and they'll call all of them so you don't waste your time going from junkyard to junkyard junkyard's my playground all right we're at porter let's make this left hand turn on porter this is the park right here stephan gerard park i just want to show you guys this park so philip charles testa born 1921 uh, i'm sorry i apologize april 21st 1924 through March 15th, 1981, also known as the Chicken Man, used to live on this block. I'm gonna park up right here because I do have cars behind me. So I'm just gonna park up. His house was on my left-hand side. It was, I'll tell you shortly, 2117 Porter Street. A nail bomb exploded under his front porch. His passing was allegedly ordered by his underboss and drug trafficker, Peter Casella and Capo Frank Narducci Sr., which later resulted into Narducci being gunned down and Casella being banished from the mob and fleeing to Florida. So 2117, that is this house on my left. Let me point the vehicle to it, right there. So you see that dark yellow house on the left? The one directly next to that, the first white house on the right of that, that's where the nail bomb uh, took place right here guys. This is where the mobster uh, lost his life And his murder sparked a war within the family within the crime family Now I'm not the sharpest uh, when it comes to crime talk So if you guys want to check out somebody who's a little sharper in that area Visit the YouTube channel called the sit down a crime podcast. It's a gentleman here in I believe he's from the South Philadelphia area but he focuses on all crime families and different uh, crime stories. And he's really good with providing information and knowledge and facts. He'll get more into depth with things like this. So if you're interested in mob talk and you like that stuff, make sure you go check out his channel. The Sit Down, a mob, or I, I believe it's a crime podcast. I'm sorry. All right, so we got some street work. As you can see, it looked like they ripped open the street. 
I always hate when they do this. I think hate's a passionate word, but yes. If there's one thing that boils my blood is potholes. <laughs> it's almost like a like AutoZone and the city of Philadelphia have an agreement. Let there be potholes so we can sell axles, shocks, struts, <laughs> bushings. All right. So let's continue moving forward. We can stop at 17th. Matter of fact, let me make this left. I do have cars behind me and I want to get away from traffic. So the Philadelphia crime family consisted of a lot of Italians. It was mainly an Italian mafia, the Italian American mafia. Testa was born to Sicilian immigrants in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and lived in South Philadelphia with his family in his teenage years. Let's make this left-hand turn. As you can see, there's angle parking, and there is also traditional parallel parking. Let's make this left here, just so we don't go through the same block once again. These little blocks are well-kept, clean areas. Really nice properties, simple. They serve the purpose of having a living space. Many original residents still live in this area to this day. People who actually lived to see the crime wars still live here. A lot of these people remember the mob stories. Or I have dozens of viewers who knew the mobsters personally. I've had plenty of people comment on my other mob videos and say, this person was my uncle, or this person um, used to work with my you know, wife, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Just wanted to show you guys some of these little blocks. Let's go up one block further. This is 19th Street, we're on 19th and Porter. Wow. Now, you guys might be wondering, what's crime like in this neighborhood? Well, based on areavibes.com, this neighborhood receives a whopping F rating for crime. Let's make this right on Cleveland Street. Cleveland. Check out the style of this block. You have homes that are pushed back away from the street side. They have, at minimum, a 10 to 15 foot sidewalk. Then they have little front terrace with like a little lawn, a porch, and then a two-story row home with an awning. And I know the sun's really not doing you guys justice. I'm sorry, guys. The sun is really blocking your view on the left-hand side. Thank you, Mother Nature. We, we appreciate it. All right, let's make this right-hand turn. Let's be very cautious before entering. Right here, you get to see the style of houses a little bit better. That's why they call it a little piece of suburbia. So total crime in this area is 25% above the national average. Violent crime is 49% above the national average. Let's make this uh, left on 19th. If we keep going straight, we'll keep going down Shunk and we'll end up being where we originally were at next to the park. Nice classic pickup truck on my right, Chevrolet. Let's make this left on Oregon Avenue. Property crime in this area is 20% above the national average. Key findings show that in Girard Estates, you have a one in 35 chance of becoming a victim of crime. Violent crimes in Girard Estates are 49% higher than the national average. Girard Estates is safer than 54% of the cities in Pennsylvania. Now, for the most part, from experience, this is a very quiet neighborhood. It's a pretty safe area, but crime does take place. Year over year in Philadelphia, crime has not changed. 